everybody video here for you today now i was going to include this in the long video i uploaded last night i will leave a link for that below but i know a lot of us watched the joe rogan experience where randall carlson and graham hancock debated michael Shermer and dr mark defont that was a really telling video very important to the people who want to get to the truth showed why debate is so important but it was kind of telling how these professional skeptics what they actually knew about Gobekli Tepe and other things. Good points were brought up on both sides. Since a lot of us watch this debate play out, I think it's important to read what Dr. Mark DeFont is now saying about the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. And debating, once again, super important, really tells the story of both sides so the audience can make up their minds. I mean, what's better than that as far as getting to some answers? And I wish all channels would. Whatever I put out there, I certainly believe in and I will defend. And the channels that have no interest in defending or debating what they put out, well, that tells me all I really need to know. Last month, this was written, pro-science skeptic Dr. Mark DeFont, now supporting the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis based on a Powell book. And I will mention that book here in a second. The website I am using here is The Cosmic Tusk. You may have heard this mentioned on Randall Carlson's Cosmographia podcast. And if you are interested in this time period and you haven't subbed Randall's channel yet, what are you waiting for? Some great talks on this time period. I will leave the link below. But I thought this video was important to do today because a lot of us watch that podcast. And I had not heard about this, that Mr. DeFont was kind of changing his tune until somebody who has been working on comet research for quite a while sent me that story. I thought it was very interesting and worth sharing. I've been having some very interesting late night talks with somebody who's been doing the comet research for quite a while. Maybe a talk with him coming up in the near future. I was just very interested in what this guy over here wrote. So let's go over to Mr. Defon's website here. This is what was sent to me. Let's just read. Now here is what Dr. Mark Defon wrote, June 5th, 2020. In my debate with Graham Hancock on the Joe Rogan experience, beginning around the two hour mark, and a critique of Graham's book I wrote for Skeptic Magazine, along with further details on my website, I found myself dealing with the veracity of the Younger Dry's impact hypothesis. I was skeptical of the hypothesis, but stated the following in my skeptic paper, the debate proceeds in proper scientific manner. As Malcolm Lacombe, one of the comet researchers pointed out in our debate, there are four indicators at the Younger Dry's boundary that may be due to an extraterrestrial origin nano diamonds, magnetic spherules, milk glass, and platinum group metals. It says my major problem with the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis was the claim that the megafauna and Clovis culture went extinct. As a result of the proposed comet strike, I noted in the skeptic paper, scientists have been a bit incredulous that a comet strike could wipe out all the megafauna as far south as Patagonia while leaving mammoths alive on St. Paul Island, Alaska until 3,700 years ago. And I think I covered that in one of my ancient history news videos, those small mammoths that appeared to live on for a long time after the Younger Dryas. It said, I recently had some correspondence with Graham, and he suggested I read a book by James Lawrence Powell entitled Deadly Voyager, The Ancient Common Strike That Changed the Earth and Human History. And I guess that book just came out this year. I'll put that on my shopping list. It is a superb book and has absolutely convinced me that there were comet airbursts at the Younger Dryas. And the airburst probably killed the megafauna, which in turn caused the Clovis culture to cease existence, partly by diminishing human numbers, but also because there was no need to have Clovis spearheads that could kill non-existent megafauna. Eh. I have not been keeping up with the debate since 2017, so I was thrilled to see the new evidence that has come to light and the lack of scientific merit in the studies that attempted to dismiss the hypothesis. I have to admit, when I watched the Joe Rogan experience, I was not impressed at all with Mr. DeFont or Mr. Shermer one bit. They didn't seem to be very knowledgeable on the very stuff they were debating. They did bring up some good points, but I will give Mr. DeFont credit for changing his mind and posting this. That, that shows me a little, for sure. You have to be open to new research. You just can't have one fixed idea on a certain subject and then just stick with it. 
and just ignore everything that comes in from the outside. You have to be a very open-minded skeptic in this field. Dr. Defont goes on writing here. I recommend the book. It's a fascinating read. The evidence is overwhelming and nicely collected and summarized by Powell. It is clear that the signature shows up precisely where it is expected about 12,900 years ago in all sites and high pressure nanodiamonds, melt glass, carbon from forest fires, magnetic spherules, etc., show up precisely where they are expected to over four continents. I also have to admit that the Younger Dry's impact hypothesis is an extremely good argument that the megafauna died out from the comic, comet airbursts and the Clovis culture was impacted. The forest fires alone wreaked havoc across the continents. The mammoths existing on St. Paul Island seems to be a minor incidental when compared to the other evidence. And a crater is not required. No wonder they didn't find shock materials. The airburst would have kept earth materials out of the equation. It says, finally, the Hiawatha crater has been recently discovered below the Greenland ice sheet may or may not be related to the Younger Dry's impact hypothesis, but it is not needed to explain the evidence. And I talked to a gentleman who actually is working or was working on that Greenland crater. And from my best guess, what he was telling me, maybe a 10% chance, but that's a lot better than anything really we have as far as a large, massive crater coming from that time period. It says, of course, all this does not change my views of Graham's two most recent books. I enjoyed reading his latest entitled America Before because it was well-written and his knowledge of archeology span is superb. But as I say in the skeptic article, to be clear, the Younger Dry's impact hypothesis debate is not over lost civilizations. If there are civilizations existing in that time period, do we know there were? Well, isn't that part of the picture? That's kind of a, I, I don't understand that at all. But it says, so I, although I consider Graham a friend, I disagree with his lost civilization scenario with all the respect he deserves. When I say that Graham's understanding of archeology span is superb, I'm talking about his knowledge about what other archeologists span have done at sites. I do not mean to imply that his research is superb. I disagree with the results of his research, and so do archaeologists. Well, that is all good for you, Mr. Defont, and I give you credit for kind of changing your views on the impact hypothesis. But when there are civilizations existing around Gobekli Tepe, they were permanent settlements. I think everybody has to reassess their views on that time period. I've talked about many places that were existing before and after Gobekli Tepe, it did not appear out of, out of nowhere, like Mr. Hancock says. So this is all up for debate and continuing research, but I will give Mr. Defont credit for coming around and admitting that there is good evidence to support this hypothesis. I just thought that was worth covering. A lot of us watched this debate. Now these professional debunkers are coming around to the idea that we were hit by a fragmented comet 12,800 years ago. I think this is worth reporting on. I will leave the link for the cosmic dust below. Thought that was cool and you all have a very safe day.